Hey, welcome to Mooney Reads. My name is Beck, and today I'm going to be talking about all of the books that I got in the month of August. So to start off with, I'm going to talk about the books that I got from Better World Books, which is a website that I've mentioned before. They sell used books, you almost always get free shipping, and they also donate book for book to various literacy-related organizations. And I have, I think I, I ended up ordering like three or four separate times because I have a problem. Um, but uh, the great thing about all of these is I think the most expensive one was a little under $7 and most everything else was like $4. So that's really great. So the first book that I got this month was The Gods of Tango by Carolina de Robertis. This is set in Argentina in 1913. The main character plays violin, um, but can't really play in public since women are not really allowed to play music in public, so they end up going undercover. Um, I think that there is a romance involved in this as well. Um, I heard about it from Audrey from Perpetual Pages, and it sounded really neat, um, so I'm interested to see what it's like. The next book that I'm going to talk about that I got from Better World Books is Circus Blooms at Night by Shani Mutu. This is a literary fiction novel that focuses in on an old woman. I think she's like looking back on her life and she may or may not have committed murder. And you get to see some, I think, about her family as well. I think the most compelling part of the book jacket says, In luminous sensual prose that employs myth and magic, Mutu joins diverse storytelling traditions to explore identity, gender, and violence in a celebration of our capacity to love despite cruelty and despair. So that sounded really cool. I actually learned about this author from Sajid over at Books Are My Social Life. I have a couple of uh, Shannon Mutu's other books uh, kind of on my radar that seem interesting, but I went ahead and got this one. Next, I got Fire Song by Adam Garnett Jones. This book focuses on a gay indigenous teen who is uh, coming into a relationship and also having to deal with grief. The next book that I have is actually an anthology, and that is Love Beyond Space and Time, an indigenous LGBT sci-fi anthology. So this should be really neat. I am uh, not super familiar with sci-fi and fantasy, but I have been pretty intrigued by uh, queer sci-fi and sci-fi from people of color. Um, and this is kind of both of those things. So I'm really interested to see what this book has in store. And I'm hoping that I can maybe uh, find some of these authors uh, who might have longer books as well if I like their short stories. Then I have Angels in America by Tony Kushner, which is a play that focuses on the AIDS epidemic in the United States. Uh, this is something that's actually already on my HIV and AIDS TBR. I used to have access to it electronically, uh, but I don't anymore, at least not in a way that's very easy for me to read. Um, I know that it is pretty long for a play. I mean, this is pretty chunky, uh, but it is two parts. I've been really looking forward to this book. Um, since reading Queering the Stage, I've been really wanting to get into some other books. I've got The Normal Heart as well as Larry Kramer's other book, um, but I also really want to get to this. The next book is also on my HIV and AIDS TBR, and that is Voices in the Band, A Doctor, Her Patients, and How the Outlook on AIDS Care Changed from Doomed to Hopeful by Susan Ball. This is exactly what the very long title says that it is. Um, this is another one that I had access to and now it's a little harder to get. I'm especially excited to get to this uh, after reading Moving Politics because I did get to see it from uh, kind of the perspective of people in the movement um, and how all of that went down. So I would be interested to see what some of the medical professionals had to say and especially um, depending on how uh, where this medical professional sat within all of that is probably going to change how their narrative is just because there was trouble that came from some medical professionals and then of course there were some uh, that were kind of on the side of the people. So it's going to be interesting to see what this book comes out to be. The final two books that I got from Better World Books Online are both a part of a series and that is Red Dragon and Hannibal, both by Thomas Harris. I already own Silence of the Lambs, and I read most, if not all, of it in high school, but it's been a really long time, and I've never read 
any of the other books in the series. So I'm actually going to be doing a buddy read with one of my friends and reading through the first three books in the trilogy. Um, according to them, uh, there's another one in the series, but they said that it wasn't that good. So we're just reading the first three. The next stack of books that I have came from Barnes & Noble, um, just kind of a regular bookstore. Uh, the first one is The Death of Vivek OG. I actually pre-ordered this one, and I've already read it, and it is so good. Like, I knew that it was going to be good because A Quick Amazi is just completely brilliant, but this focuses around uh, Vivek OG, who lives in Nigeria, and you follow Vivek, and you also follow several other people. Of course, with the title of the book, you know that this centers around Vivek Oji's death. But you get to learn so much about these other characters, and there are also a lot of really interesting themes um, around stuff like family, also immigration, um, because uh, Vivek's mom immigrated, and there are a lot of other people in their town who have wives who came from other countries. There's also a whole lot in here about sexuality and gender, and I mean, a lot of this book is emotional, but the last quarter of this book kind of emotionally wrecked me, but it was excellent. I absolutely gave it five stars. It's definitely one of the best fiction books that I've read this year. So I would highly, highly recommend this book and every other book that Akweke Amezi has written. And then next I got This Is How You Lose the Time War. I have heard so many good things about this. I know that it's sci-fi and queer there's time travel involved as well as yearning. So I'm pretty stoked to get to this. I really, really loved The Seep, so I was in the mood for some more character-driven sci-fi, and this seems like it's going to be really good for that. Next, I have Freedom is a Constant Struggle by Angela Davis. This is kind of a classic. This is one that uh, is on one of my TBRs. I don't know if it's one that I've made a video for or not. I honestly couldn't tell you. But, um, regardless, I think I have access to a PDF of this, but I just really wanted it in physical form. I read better that way anyways. But I'm really stoked to get into Angela Davis's work. This specifically looks at prison abolition as well as other freedom struggles globally and how they connect to each other. The final book that I got from this bookstore is a 2020 release. I hadn't heard anything about it before, but I saw it in the store and I had to get it. And that is... The Pink Line, Journeys Across the World's Queer Frontiers. And uh, from my understanding, this looks globally at LGBT identity. Um, so it looks across different countries and different experiences being queer. Um, I would imagine that this also kind of focuses on language. There's also going to be a lot about politics in this book, uh, just kind of from the blurb. And it is quite chunky. So I am hoping that it's going to be a thorough, really good read. Um, some of the people that blurbed it on the back are part of the reason why I went ahead and bought it without looking into it more. Susan Stryker is one of the people quoted on the back, and she wrote Transgender History. Um, there are several other people as well, but that's the one that I think really kind of sold me on top of the fact that this book is exactly like within my area of study and everything like that, so I could not get it. I'm not 100% sure when I'm going to read it. I know it's definitely going to be added to my LGBT history TBR. Um, if nothing else, whenever the Tome Topple comes up, this one is definitely going to count for it. Um, so I could save it back for that. But we'll see how it goes. And then the final book that I have is actually an ARC that I received from the author's publicity team. And that is Hark by John R. Gordon. I am not sure totally what to expect from this book. I know that it focuses on a gay main character, and it looks at themes that focus on class and race. I think that time travel might be involved, um, so I'm really interested to see what this is going to end up being like. So those are all of the books that I got in the month of August. If you've read any of these, definitely let me know what you thought about them down in the comments, and thank you all so much for watching. Bye! Hey, welcome to Mooney Reads. My name is Beck, and today I'm going to have a cat sitting on my hands and my books, excuse me, I can't be comfortable. I have like six books in my lap, I don't know what she's doing. Welcome to Mooney Reads. My name is... Yes? Hello? Yes, ma'am? What do you need?
Bye.